You know, in sports, there's some guys who are just absolute freak athletes. You know, you think of guys like LeBron James and Rob Gronkowski. You have just these big physical guys that you're just like, how are you even a person? And I think one of those guys is O.J. Howard. I mean, just looking at him physically, I mean, the guy's a monster. Listed at 6'6", 250 pounds, he's certainly not the type of guy I would want to get into a fight with. Then again, there isn't exactly a ton of people that I would want to get into a fight with, but regardless. Size really does matter a lot, especially as a tight end. Like, if I take a look at this play, for example, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that's just the order he's going up against. One of the difficulties of being a tight end is when you do run routes, oftentimes you will be going up against linebackers. So if you are a big, strong tight end, oftentimes you would want to create some contact, but if you're going up against a linebacker, it makes it more difficult to do so. He's going to be running a curl route, which is the way you could try to create some contact on this play, and take a look at what's going to actually end up happening. The Steeler who's going up against him is basically going to try to put his left hand on OJ Howard's right shoulder. That's basically what he's doing here. The first way would be that if OJ Howard breaks to the bottom half of the screen, then he can continue following him to the bottom half of the screen and not allow much separation. By having contact on OJ Howard, if OJ Howard cuts in any direction, you kind of know where he's going. The other way is now OJ Howard can't just run straight through the linebacker because there's already a contact, so if he tried to do that, the linebacker should just be able to push him away. What Howard is going to do is basically swing his left hand over and hit the shoulder pad right there. It's a small move, but look at how effective it is. I mean, the Steeler ends up falling to the ground, and OJ Howard is able to pick up an easy catch. Sometimes the rest will call every little thing as a penalty, but if they're letting people play, I mean, OJ Howard being physical can really help. This play will be another good example of that. That's where OJ Howard is on the screen, and he is going to be going up against the Steelers defender right there. Once again, the Steelers is going to try to create contact, trying to slow OJ Howard down. The problem is he's just a hard guy to slow down. You put both hands on him, but he's still able to just basically run through you and still continue to run his route. He's able to get completely off that Steeler and create some separation pretty far down the field where his route is supposed to be. But also worth mentioning, a lot of times on these types of routes, you'd see a guy just run straight there. Just continue running straight to the sideline because you don't want to give up any more yards. You want to get as many yards as possible. But OJ Howard knows that's much more important to get a catch than it is just to pick up an extra three yards after getting a catch. You have to get the catch first. So instead, Howard is going to run like that. And that's crucial because it gives the quarterback a lot better of an angle to try to hit him. Even when he's going up against a guy like TJ Watt, as you just saw, he's just such a good player that you can't really do much against him. When you look at Tampa Bay's stats from last season, it's definitely a little bit head-scratching. Everyone talked about their inconsistent quarterback play, and it was pretty inconsistent, but they still ended up with the most passing yards that main team in the league, which is definitely saying something, being that there was two guys who threw for over 5,000 yards last season. They also had the third best offense overall, despite having the fourth worst rushing offense. So clearly something had to be clicking for Tampa Bay, and a lot of that was their receivers. Having guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Adam Humphreys really helped their offense, but it also really helped having O.J. Howard. The fact of the matter is, having a guy like O.J. Howard just makes things so much easier for a quarterback, and this play will be a good example of that. So it's going to be man coverage, however, it's going to be a little bit of a unique man coverage on this play. Instead of just having those three Steelers you see on the screen all have one-on-one -on -one coverage against the three Tampa Bay receivers who are lined up to the bottom half of the screen, they're instead actually going to have a defensive back going to be rushing the passer, so he's not playing man coverage at all on this play. So instead, it'll be that Steeler who's guarding the second receiver on the bottom half of the screen, and then it'll be a linebacker who's actually currently pretty close to the top half of the screen who will be running over to make sure that he's covering O.J. Howard. That linebacker is T.J. Watt, who, as I mentioned, is a pretty good coverage linebacker, and if you take a look at what he does here, he actually does a great job of coming back. He had a long distance to go, but he is a quick enough guy to get over and make sure that he's playing good coverage against O.J. Howard. There isn't a huge window to make a throw here, but that's never stopped Ryan Fitzpatrick before. So he's going to throw it up there and see if O.J. Howard can make the catch, and O.J. Howard is able to leap up and make the catch. It's just a good play by O.J. Howard of turning his shoulders around, leaping up, and being able to make the grab. That's kind of where the height thing comes in. When you're 6'6", it just makes things easier. Even when there's tight coverage, you can just throw it up, and he can jump up and make those catches. On this play, what's going to happen at first is O.J. Howard is going to go out to just block that stealer, and then he's going to run his route to the middle of the field. Basically, his entire goal on this play is to just make that block, and then allow the tackle to get time to run over and make sure that he can make a block. But O.J. Howard actually kind of gets bumped a little bit farther back than he would want to. So this now means that he's a lot closer to the line of scrimmage than he would want to be when running his route. Typically, he would like to already be a few yards past the line of scrimmage at this point. But notice what he's going to do once there is close to being contact. This is kind of the perfect situation if you're a tight end, especially a big tight end like O.J. Howard. You see this happen with Rob Gronkowski a lot, and while O.J. Howard is no Rob Gronkowski, I'm still using it as a comparison. Because basically what it means is that if you're trying to tackle O.J. Howard, you kind of have to go low. He's so big that if you do try to go high, it can result in you just getting stiff-armed out of the play. But because he is going low, all O.J. Howard has to do is stick his arm out that doesn't have the ball and basically just stiff-arm him there. Now granted, the defender who was trying to tackle him just wasn't as close as he would want to be to try to tackle O.J. Howard. He kind of just took a bad angle 
and ended up completely whiffing on him, but it was still a good play by OJ Howard. He did everything right, and in fact, he's still doing everything right. It's a little bit hard to tell, but if you see his right foot, it's actually planted pretty far to the top half of the screen, at least in terms of relative to his body. This is key because it can give him an angle that allows him to then cut back into the middle of the field and pick up even more yards. The route itself wasn't anything too fancy, I mean, he was just underneath all of the coverage. However, it was a great job of being able to get around tackles and pick up as many yards as possible. This one's another interesting one. It's going to be a man coverage on the top half of the screen, and those are the two routes that the Tampa Bay receivers on the top half of the screen will be running. So one place you might actually look to throw would be right there at the end of O.J. Howard's route. But also another interesting thing on this play is that it's actually going to be a defensive back who's in charge of covering Howard, not a linebacker. So that defensive back is playing press coverage, and he is going to try to create contact at the line. However, against a big guy like O.J. Howard, that's just not going to work. When there is that big of a height and weight difference, trying to jam a guy really isn't going to work out too well. Howard can just run around him, and when you do run around him like that, really what can you do? Since he has the footwork to get around you, he's easily able to do just that, and the light amount of contact doesn't affect him too much. But again, he is going to be going up against a corner, meaning that there isn't going to be a ton of separation because that corner is obviously very fast. If you're a corner and you're not fast, you're probably playing the wrong position. So again, not much separation, so this shouldn't be a great thing, but again, once again, all you have to do is just throw it right there. If you throw it up to your tall player, he can leap up and make the grab, and that's exactly what he's able to do, and it leads to a big completion. And also I should make things clear, just because I've shown a couple plays where he hasn't gotten a ton of separation doesn't mean that he's not a fast guy and can't get separation. Everyone's going to have certain plays where he don't get separation and I'm showing those just to show how he doesn't need separation to be effective. But he definitely has speed and footwork, like if you take a look at this play for example, he's going to be sent in motion to the top half of the screen. Now if you notice right there, the linebackers are communicating here. That guy's saying, hey Luke Keekly, make sure you cover OJ Howard, make sure you don't let him get free to the top half of the screen. Keekly actually notices it right away and breaks up to the top half of the screen and obviously Luke Keekly is not a slow guy, but Howard easily wins the battle and is able to outrun Keekly for a touchdown. That's kind of the dilemma you face if you're a defensive coordinator. If you put a cornerback against him, well then he can just leap up and make a catch over you, but if you put a linebacker against him, well then he can just outrun the linebacker. And if you use a linebacker against Howard and use that linebacker's physicality to try to slow down Howard, that doesn't work out too well either. Like on this one, this is actually a huge play in the game. There's only a minute and 10 seconds left and Tampa Bay is down 8 and it's a 4th and 3. And since they don't have any timeouts left, if they don't get the first down here, the game's over and they lose. Since now he's running a cover two man here, and since that's OJ Howard's route right there, it's actually perfect for OJ Howard and the Bucks. It basically means that there's only going to be one on one coverage with that linebacker, and so it's all up to OJ Howard to try to make this play. So, as I alluded to earlier, the linebacker is going to try to create contact, but you really can't create contact here. OJ Howard is already cutting, so there's really not a lot you can do as a linebacker. If you put too much force into him, you basically just push him out of the way and that will be pass interference, which is a penalty and would give up the first down. You kind of have to let off the contact and hope you can run downfield and make a play, but he just can't on this one. OJ Howard's too fast, he's able to outrun him and it leads to a touchdown. This next one's another interesting one, that's where he is on the screen and he is once again going to be going up against one-on-one -on -one coverage against a linebacker. So the linebacker is creating contact and doing a pretty good job of creating that contact. But what Howard can do is just continue to run east and west. When you are running to a different angle, this now makes contact that much more difficult. Typically, this would still mean that you get slowed down, but because OJ Howard is so big and so strong, the contact doesn't really do too much. He's still able to muscle his way over to where his route is supposed to be and create some separation. I mean, there was basically contact this entire play, including when he was catching the ball, but he just remained focused and knew what he had to do. He ran his route well despite the contact and made the catch despite the contact, and it resulted in a Tampa Bay touchdown. While it's certainly the most fun talking about a tight end's receiving ability, receiving isn't the only thing a tight end has to do. They also have to block. Sometimes on the same play, like this one, OJ Howard is going to start off blocking that Falcon right over there, and then he's going to run out to the right side of the screen. Now granted, the whole point of this play isn't to that OJ Howard actually blocks the Falcon, it's just to get the Falcon slowed down and allow the tackle to get in better position to try to block that Falcon. So basically for a tight end, you want to block him very quickly and then get off your block very quickly and be able to run your route. So look at how fast OJ Howard makes the block and then runs his route. I mean, in a second, he's completely off, and now DeMar Dotson has plenty of room to get over and make that block. It kind of became a domino effect, but because now DeMar Dotson had a great position to make a block, it gave Winston a little bit more time, and he was actually able to scramble and pick up some yards. Now, of course, you can't just give all the credit to OJ Howard on that one. That would just be silly, but he does deserve some credit. There's also plays like this where he has more of a typical block. What Tampa Bay is going to do is have the right guard and tackle, double team that Saint right over there, and then OJ Howard will have a one-on-one -on -one block right there. Basically, the whole idea is that it is going to be run through there, so typically the biggest block would actually be OJ Howard's right here. I mean, you should trust that your right guard and right tackle couldn't double team a guy out of the way, so really OJ Howard is a play where this play could or couldn't work. 
Now, Saint is actually going to do a very good job of disrupting this play and not get moved too much, which definitely makes things worse for Tampa Bay. But OJ Howard did his part on this one. I mean, you can't really expect OJ Howard to be moving guys out of the way too much. Sure, it would be nice if he could, but that's not really what you expect out of a tight end. When you're trying to create a gap and you have a double team on the other side, typically you're expecting that double team to be able to push someone out of the way. Howard just can't allow that Saint to then close up that gap, and he didn't. He did his part on this one. Because the rest of the blockers didn't do a very good job of blocking on that one, the play still went for a loss of yards, but that wasn't Howard's fault. He still did a very good job. Job. One more play I want to talk about, that's where Howard is on the screen, and it's going to be a run right there. So Howard's job is actually pretty simple on this one. Just run out and block that linebacker, and in theory, you want to get that linebacker to go in that direction. The guy Howard's in charge of blocking does a very good job of running far to the right side of the screen. He realizes that it's probably going to play in that direction, so he's running over there to get in the way. So now, Howard trying to push him in that direction is completely off the table. There'd be no way you could do that. But he realizes this mid-play, and take a look at what he's going to do. He turns his body and puts his right hand on the back of that Steelers defender. From here, he can pretty much just push that Steelers defender completely out of the way, and it ends up being a great block from Howard. Now again, granted, this wasn't a game-changing play. I mean, one blocker can only do so much, but it was still a very good block from Howard. He still yet to play a full season, but when he's on the field, he's a tremendous athlete and really just a tremendous player. I can definitely see him being a very valuable player for many years to come, and as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, I'm very happy to have him on our team.